Hey guys, it's Chris, and today we're going to be taking a look at this. What is it? This is a Rev 5 Amiga 500 OCS 512K Agnes that won't come on. This was donated to the channel by Mr. Michael. I'm not going to mention your last name, but you know who you are, and greatly appreciated. Thank you. We'll get this sucker sorted as soon as we figure out what's going on. I'm busting out the big guns today. That would be the Anden Star. Yep, did a review on that. I don't use it that often, but when I need to see when these Coke bottles can't, that sucker comes in handy. Well, not the flashlight, but you know, that thing. Um, we're going to be busting out the solder station and just Linux crap so I can get a board diagram and see what's going on. So let's get sorted. We're going to be using my uh, SCART to DB23 through the Chinesium HD video converter. You can get these on eBooger super cheap. We're then going to use my replacement power supply. Got it off eBay. A fella in Poland is making these. And here we go. So let's just hit the button. Look for smoke or blow ups. And nothing. Nothing at all. Okay. Nice. To make sure we're nothing. I'm also going to use composite video. Alright, so with composite video, here we go, turning it on. I get a video signal. Let's let it sit for a minute because it has no floppy or anything, so it might freak out and take a couple seconds. Nothing is warm. Odd CIA is slightly warm. We have a sort of screen on here. Okay, look at that. I pressed on the CIA and I got this craziness on um, we are just in composite video it looks like it's something's happening so we have some video distortion what is it I don't know let's look around the board we're gonna see what we can find then we'll either scope the bus lines look for the reset signal check for any craziness and we'll continue. So, after a little bit of probing and checking out, what you're seeing here on the screen is JP2 on a Rev 5 Amiga 500 motherboard. This is in between the 68,000 and the Kickstart ROM on a Rev 6, 7, 8. Your mom, uh... it is to the right of the Kickstart ROM next to the Agnes. What is JP2? JP2, by the size of this massive screwdriver, has two jumper positions, a center, central ground, a 512, and a 1 meg setting. Basically, you bridge a solder point or cut a solder point. By default, the lower and center are joined. You can see here there's some residual cut. To make a 1 meg Agnes, you would join this center pin to the top, which will redirect the fast RAM tick something signal to be not slow RAM or fast RAM out of the belly slot but that uses your other 512k for the chip RAM and the Agnes would need to be an 8372 but this has not that um, for a Rev 5, you're also going to need another wire, and then you take 1 and 31 on the ROM for a newer ROM. Um, so, JP2 is our poo poo. We'll turn off the microscope. Got to do a mail time. We're getting kind of backed up here. So, now that I know what the issue is, the best course of action is going to be that'll work. This screwdriver. So this screwdriver is going to help me out. And I am blind as a bat. So I'm going to use this. And I'm going to trace JP2 down next to R103. That'll do. I'm going to plug this in. I'm going to plug in. No, we're going to use my thingamabobber here. And we're going to energize. But I'm going to jumper the points next to JP2 for the original OCS. I'm just pressing on this. Let's see what happens. Now a lot of times if you 
screw this up or bridge both points by accident, you're going to blow your ROM. There's no way around it, or you can possibly pop the Agnes. We'll see. This is either going to be a fast repair or a fast test or a long and drawn out endeavor. Green. Green is RAM. I got audio though. Green is RAM. I'm going to turn on the soldering station. I'm going to blob this real quick and I want to show you what I'm doing. Now what you're seeing is this. This is JP2 where the center pin is gone. This basically comes down to here. This is a solder point that goes to that center pad. This is the solder point that goes to the bottom. I can either run a wire from here or just bridge these two together and it's the same as the original uh, layout. So that's what I'm going to do. So that's done. Soldering's done. Okay, so with that done, we have the solder bridged across the two pins that uh, were the JP2. I'm going to hook up my audio the RGB, the comp component, composite, whatever, the power, um, and we're just going to try it. This is diagram. I have no keyboard. Here's a 1.3 ROM. Let's see what happens. This ROM, well, I guess the big crack in the bottom might be a problem. Yep, she got a big crack in her. Like plumber crack. It's physically cracked. So we'll try it. Red screen. Alright. Red means what, folks? What did I just say was cracked? Shoot. The ROM. Okay, so a cracked ROM, not a good sign. It's a 1.3 ROM. There's nothing I can do with it. It's got a big crack in the bottom of it. I don't know if you can see it. It's a uh, cracked in half all along here, all the way down. I don't know if you can catch that, but. I apologize, I hate throwing Commodore stuff away, but, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's it, that's what I can do. Let me go grab a rock. Right, I'm back, I got an assortment of things here, um, box of my junk, I got a 314 ROM, don't think that'll work, 3150902, 3150901 is the original, what's well, an 02, let's see what else I got in this box, um, I got a, got a Super Buster, I uh, got a prototype Western Digital MX. What is that? MX Commodore Amiga 205. That's from the Amiga 600. MX 204. I got a Moss CIA. I got a Sharp 3150902. That'll work. That's a 1.3 room for the Amiga 500. All right, so we're gonna put this in our pin straightener here. Just goes in here like that. Where can you get yourself one of these pin straighteners? This wonderful man owns a company up in Canada. We'll let him slide. It's called RetroRewind.ca. You can pick yourself up a pin straightener. Better quality than this Chinese piece of... Alright, so that's it. New ROM. Uh, we're on HDMI. I'm going to unplug compo... Oh, yeah, I'm going to leave it plugged in. Let's hit it. If if my theory is correct, that bridge thing, this Agnes, we should get a Workbench 1.3 screen. White reset. Just saw the reset. And nothing. Well, I have no floppies. Let's let it sit a second. Alright. That was easy. So, what do we got? Um, we have an Amiga 500. This is not 800 by 600. That's that Chinese in box. Amiga 500 Rev 5, right? Rev 5, blown ROM, 512K RAM, no belly slot expansion, no keyboard, no floppy, cords, power, or otherwise. All right, we got the GoTech hooked up. We are in the external disk drive port, which is always next to the audio on the 500. We're going to throw that ROM away. This is 1.3. It's not going to boot off an external drive. 
Okay, remember 1.3 sucks and it will not boot off an uh, DFO DF1. So I'm going to do the next best thing and rip out that ROM and we're going to go to another one that I had. What do you got to do to a Rev 5? You got to take a wire between 1 and 31. Okay, so 8,000 hours later, I did a wire between 1 and 31. Bingo. Yay! So look at that. Kickstart 204. We're going to boot off DF1, which is Amiga Test Kit. Holy Christmas. All right. We get test kit. We're going to wait a couple seconds for this to get out of the screen. So just remember, if you have a Rev 5 motherboard, between pin 1 and 31, I just kind of slop, slopped some solder on there and stuck a little bodge wire in it. And that lets you use a Rev 5 board with a more, quote, modern ROM. Anyway, I've got a, let's see, audio. Filter. Frequency. My cat loves this. All four channels work. Wonderful. Keyboard. Don't have one. We'll put that together shortly. Video. RGB. Clear. Memory. Ooh. Test hall memory. This is motherboard RAM. Let's hope she works. Because this is 16 64KX1 chips. Oh, we're rolling through it. Check CIA's timers. We're NTSC, so sometimes we run fast. No, we're good. Check that out. They must have fixed that. Battery backed up clock. No shit. Peripheral ports we're not going to check because I don't have the dongle. Mouse, right, left. Don't have a middle. This is a Dataflyer 500. This is a big mess in my room. This is a GVP Impact Series 2 500 SCSI with the old game mode. This is a hot soldering station that is 200 plus degrees. This is a super long Super Drive XP which had a bad comparator. Did a video on it a long time ago. We're gonna just shove that in there. Just see what happens. We're going to use the Pinega mouse pad for any kind of nice stuff. Whatever, just get out of my way. Yep, what happens with this one? Hoo hoo! Real hard drive. I don't know what hard drive it is. This has no RAM. I don't know what's on here. Hard drive light is lighting up barely see it because it's like well it went out as soon as I turn the light out but there it goes my bad workbench 1.3 let's see if we can get a disc change 289k a chip around. Here's extras 1.3. This is a 1.3 bootable hard drive. Nice to give this old turd some love. Let it fire up a little bit. So this originally was on the Amiga 1000. Just gonna put Boeing here. That's off of GoTech. By the way, we're rocking off the GoTech over here. Copy into this Supra drive. And we're gonna run the Boeing ball which loads in the background it gives a second normally this will make the boing sound and you can see whatever but Mega 500 Rev 5 came in dead upgraded to a workbench 1.3 ROM because the original ROM was cracked then switched over to this 204 ROM had to do the pin 1 to 31 bodge wire don't lift any pins out of your ROM socket to use a newer ROM. You can do that, or you can build yourself an adapter that would do that for you and just bend your pin out of the way. I just prefer just soldering a bridge wire. It's super simple. You're not in here that often. Then we fired up the old data flyer with uh, no memory and booted the boing ball. Now I'm going to do something more stupid, and I'm going to hook up the GVP, and we're going to see what that can do. 
we're back I have the power supply for the GVP you can mod these so it will run off of the Amiga bus so what I like to do first since this is 1.3 I think I'm gonna turn this on first let this power up and spin up it's an actual rotational drive then we're gonna turn on the Amiga and see what we get I don't know what's in here. This has 4 megs of RAM, I think. And we're loading something. There we go. We're loading something. Booting. I don't know if it's going to work, but we're going to see. There we go. Look at that. Pow. So this is Workbench 2 on a uh, 4 megs of RAM. Nice. Kickstart 204 Workbench. 2.1 your computer is an Amiga 1000 not really so this dead motherboard now is a functional Amiga can we run a game can we run dread let's run dread let's try it now the cool thing with this GVP is this I can go like this turn it off I hit this game switch this prevents auto boot and now I will have full floppy access and I can go boot off the F1 and load Dread. Or is it loading? There you go. Awesome. Off of GoTech. Busted Amiga. How am I supposed to click? I have no keyboard. <laughs> but Dread. GVP. GoTech. Now revived Amiga 500 Rev 5. We're gonna flip our switch back, turn this off, pull this out, turn this on. This stays powered up because it has an external power supply right there. You can mod these to run off the Amiga internal power supply, which you'll need a larger than stock. The original Amiga power supply. This is like a 20 watt power supply, 25 watt. Yeah. And you're going to notice the boot process on this original stuff is slow. Why? That's just how it was, man. But it was the coolest thing in the world when you could boot your Amiga off a hard drive. DigiPaint is on here. Does it run? I don't know. It says GVP. Oh my goodness. New Tech logo. What is that? That's some balls. Okay. The controls on this are horrid. What is Lady? It's a lady. Alright. I don't know if this is clearing the pictures in the background, but... Very basic 1980s fruit. Anywho, that is our Amiga 500. All sorted. Boy, it gets quiet without that drive running. So, there we go, guys. We have another successful repair. And thank you, Mr. Michael, for sending this for repair. So, that's all I got for now. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this helps you. And I hope you learned something.